This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Marianne Kellenbach, pastor at Living Faith Church, which is located in Port St. Lucie in the community of tradition in Florida. And today is Wednesday, September the 9th. I can't believe I'm saying September the 9th already. A couple weeks ago, we started to take a look at Luther's, Martin Luther's, small catechism. Catechism is the instruction in the faith. And we looked at uh, how Luther starts out with the Ten Commandments, the law, where we understand uh, from a spiritual standpoint, we can't keep the law. And so it is guilt producing. As humans, we understand that we are sinful creatures. We're not divine. And so we are in need, based on our illness, we are in need of health and the source of health is uh, what we discover in what's called the Apostles Creed, that what we confess, what we profess, our faith in God the Creator, Jesus Christ, God, right, the um, Redeemer, and uh, God the Holy Spirit, the Sustainer. We live in the world of the presence of the Sustainer now, the Holy Spirit here with us today. And then we talked about, um, okay, so how do we ask for this um, over and over or give thanks for what we have been given, uh, the prescription, and that is the Lord's Prayer. And we covered the seven petitions of the Lord's Prayer, the beginning and the ending last week. And this week in Luther's Catechism, we're going to take a look at the sacraments. Now, as Lutherans, we have uh, two sacraments. Um, that we're going to take a look at. The first one is the sacrament of baptism, and the second one is the sacrament, um, was, let's say, the sacrament of holy baptism, and the sacrament of the altar, which is also known as Holy Communion, the Eucharist. Um, so we, we basically have two. And the reason there are two is because an important thing about a sacrament is that it's something that God has commanded, something that God has commanded for us. And there is something that this commandment does. Um, It is pure benefit to us. So we don't partake in baptism. We don't partake in the um, Lord's Supper for the sake of us doing something for God. But a sacrament is pure benefit for us. And what is the benefit? It's the grace. It's the receiving again and again and again of the reassurance that we are called and claimed as God's children and that the promise is real and we have to hear this again and again and again because this world is going to tell us that none of this is true. But we know, we know it is. And so the purpose of the sacraments um, primarily is uh, to remind us that the promise is given to us. We can taste it, we can feel it. So one of the important things also is that it's God's word, God's word along with a physical element. So it's not just the physical element. In the case of holy baptism, it is water. In the case of the Lord's Supper, it is the bread and the wine. So it is not just the physical element that has to be present, but it has to be God's word, God's promise that we are God's. And when the two of them come together, we have the sacrament. So what does Luther say about the sacrament of baptism? Well, let's take it a look at it. What is baptism? He says, baptism is not simply plain water. Instead, it is water used according to God's command and connected with God's word. So that's what's important, that it is a physical element and God's word, God's promise is present. So what then is this word of God? Remember in catechism, it's a question and answer. So then what is the word of God? Where our Lord Christ says in Matthew 28, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. (laughs) What gifts or benefits does baptism grant? Remember, it is a gift. It's purely for us. God's gift 
to us. So what gifts or benefits does baptism grant? It brings about forgiveness of sins, redeems from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe it, as the words and promise of God declare. So we get to hear it again. So how can water do such great things is the next question. Clearly the water does not do it, but the word of God, which is with and alongside the water, And faith, which trusts this word of God in the water. For without the word of God, the water is plain water and not a baptism. But with the word of God, it is a baptism. That is a grace-filled water of life and a bath of new birth in the Holy Spirit. As St. Paul says to Titus in chapter 3, through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. This spirit... He pours out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The saying is sure. So then the question is, what then is the significance of such a baptism with water? It signifies that the old person in us with all sins and evil desires, is to be drowned and die through daily sorrow for sin and through repentance. And on the other hand, that daily a new person is to come forth and rise up to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul says in Romans 3, we have been buried with Christ by baptism into death. So that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Isn't that just glorious? I don't know about you, but each day when I wash my face, I remember my baptism. I remember that each day as I Um, confess and and have a conversation with God every night and ask for forgiveness um, of the things that I have done or the things that I have failed to do. I know that in the morning when I wake up and I wash my face, I'm reminded of this promise that has been given. That when I was a child, right, the words that were spoken to me through uh, a mediator, through a pastor was Marianne, Barbara, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And then I am reminded with when I was marked with the chrism oil, the cross on my forehead. And as I do for our children and adults who receive this gift of baptism, I'm going to say, Mary and Barbara, beloved child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. And while I cannot see that cross anymore, God does see that cross. And I am reminded in those words that I am a beloved child of God. So each and every time I either go to the beach and I see the water or like today, just go kicking along in the, um, in the, uh, the tide as, it, as it's coming in, kicking along the water or going into a pool and swimming, reminding my, me, myself that I am a baptized child of God. And especially when you go underwater, right? It's that I have been drowned in my sinful nature and I have been raised up anew, just as Christ has been raised new, to a new person. Newness is what we're given each and every single day. And so when you wash your face, when you take a drink of water, when you go for a swim in the pool, or any time you see it raining outside, remember the gift, the promise that has been made to you. Because that promise will not be taken away. And I don't know about you, but I need to hear it every single day. 
So that is the gift of baptism, where we are called and claimed as a child of God. And tomorrow, we will take a look at the sacrament of Holy Communion. On this day, as you wash your hands, remember we're in this COVID-19, I want for you to remember your baptism. And if you haven't been baptized, my goodness, let's have a conversation so that you can have this gift bestowed upon you so that you can become a child of God who is given the promise, the promise in a very real way, the word and the water. Quick, 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 one more quick thing. Does it matter if you're fully immersed or not? No, it does not matter. And the other thing that doesn't matter is if you're an infant or an adult, because it's not something we are accepting. It is pure gift that is given to us by God. Blessings to you as you remember your baptism on this day. Amen. Amen.